Well, hey there, guys. Coach Andrew coming at you live from the studio home office. I'm fresh off of an Ironman training session. I just ran three miles, which puts me at <clears throat> 23 and a half miles of training this week. If you want to learn more about my Ironman training, I'm filming a whole video series about it. I'll have a playlist and a section on the channel. You can check it out there. But that is not at all what this video is about. This is an Ask Coach Andrew video today. And today we have a question from a friend who says that he is stuck in a place of depression. He says that this entire year has been nothing but negativity, nothing but hardship. He says he has some family who are getting diagnosed with illnesses. He said he had problem at his job. He had problem with his relationship. He said he's fallen off of his workout routine. He's been gaining weight. He says it seems like everything has been going completely wrong and he can't, he just can't get out of this rut. He can't get out of this depression. And he's like, when is it going to end? Like, is there even anything I can do? And I want to answer this question because it's, um, I, I can relate. S something very similar happened to me in um, 2018. My family was going through a lot of stuff. Um, not my family, but my extended family has been going through a lot of hard stuff. Um, I was struggling a lot with my workouts, with my fitness. Um, I put on some weight, some muscle, but I gained a couple percentage points in body fat. And, and overall, it was it was kind of a trying year. And um, even 2017, the year before that, was also very difficult. Um, that was the year where I, you know, was really, really trying to get my business together. And um, just a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, and I can totally, totally relate. I want to share with you something that I first learned from uh, a person who I really consider my first online mentor ever, who I discovered in like 2014, a guy by the name of Elliot Hulse. Um, he is a YouTuber. He's got a huge following now, and his message is very polarizing. So check him out at your own risk. But back in the day when I was in college, I mean, Elliot was kind of like a father figure to me. And um, he once shared something and I don't remember it word for word, but he, he talked about how life is cyclical and things tend to happen in cycles. And um, he talks a lot about balance. You know, there's yin and yang, there's good and evil. And life is always, um, it's always trying to find equilibrium. It's trying to balance itself out. And these ideas are very old, right? These ideas are not mine. They're not Eliot's. Um, they, they go really, really far back. I, they're rooted in Eastern philosophy. But I want to share this with you because life is very cyclical. Life is very black and white. There, there, there's two sides to every coin. And for every deep, dark rut of depression and negativity you experience, there's also a flip side to that where there's positivity and abundance and joy. Sometimes it just comes down to a matter of perspective and um, you have to look for the bright spots within the negativity. If you look at like a, a picture of a yin yang, you know, there's, there's the black side and the white side, but there's also a white dot in the black side and there's a black dot on the white side. And um, I think that's kind of symbolic. I don't know if this is why it's actually there, but I interpret it as being even in the dark episodes, even in the dark times, there's always a little bit of light. And in the really, really good times, there's always a little bit of darkness. And sometimes, like I said, it's just a matter of perspective and it's a matter of you looking for the things that are meaningful and the things that are joyful and positive when you're in a low rut like that. Now, the second thing that I want to share with you is about the cycle, right? The seasons of life. And this has been something that, to me, lately, has actually been incredibly profound. And if you think about life, right? Think about life, not just human life, right? But the universe, the planet, everything that we experience on a daily basis, picture it as a whole, right? So picture planet Earth, picture the universe if you can. No one can really do that because we don't know what it looks like. But try to picture the whole of existence and imagine it as like this giant circle and things are just kind of like spinning and swirling, right? It's interesting when you start to think about it because we don't know what our universe is. We don't know how big it is. And we don't know if it is a single universe in a multiverse of infinite numbers of multiverses. Maybe those are spinning. But you look at galaxies, they spin. You look at the solar system, we spin around the sun. You look at the planet Earth, it spins. What does that spin cause? It causes the seasons. You look at um, a molecule, right? You look at an atom, 
What, <laughs> what do atoms do? The electrons, they spin around the nucleus. You, you break apart electrons, what's going on in there? There's quarks and all kinds of other things. Everything's always spinning. And then you, you start to notice patterns in life, right? You, you look at like Fibonacci sequences and all of the, the designs that we find in nature. And there's, there's circles and spirals and spinning things everywhere. I think our life is a lot like that, right? I, Elliot, again, back to Elliot Hulse. He thinks that the cycle of a man's life happens in cycles of 12 years. And every 12 years, there's some kind of epiphany. There's some kind of change that has to happen, right? Because when a boy reaches the age of 12, that's about when puberty begins. And that boy starts becoming an adolescent, starts becoming a man, right? And then 12 years after that is 24 years old. And if you look at my life story, when I was 24 years old, that's literally when the actual chapter of my adulthood began, right? I was about to have a kid. I just started my business. I was beginning to understand the full responsibilities of being a man, a father, a husband, right? You're actually becoming an adult. Big things happen around the age of 24. And then around the age of 36 is when most people start to have their midlife crisis. They begin to realize that they're getting old. They're starting to feel pain in their joints and they're realizing, I haven't done the things that I wanted to do with my life. And then you get to the age of 48. What happens at 48? We start thinking about retirement, the children start leaving the home. You start getting empty nest syndrome, right? They're going off to school. You know, you might, you might be thinking about your career and, and, you know, searching for spirituality and meaning. And the cycle goes on and on and on. And I'm not here to tell you that this is exactly how it works because I don't know. But I do know that life happens in cycles. And what you're going through right now, my friend, is just a low point in that cycle. So think about life like the seasons of our planet, right? So you're going to have high phases, you're going to have low phases, and you're going to have transitional phases. So right now you're in a low phase, you're in a depressive phase. Think about this as the winter of the seasons of your life, okay? Your transition phases will be like spring and fall, and eventually you'll be back into a high phase, which will be like the summer of your lifetime. And as you live your life, you will discover what the average lifespan of this seasonal cycle is but you'll begin to identify when you're moving in and out of these different seasons, these different phases. I can tell you right now from my own personal experience that my phases tend to last about two years. Two years is the average season for me. I was in a summer phase towards the end of high school. I had achieved just about everything that I wanted. I was class president, varsity tennis team captain, student council president. I had the girlfriend of my dreams. I had a full ride to the uh, university for the Army ROTC, all of my college was paid for, and I was going to apply to West Point a second time, and I knew that I was going to get in. Life was good. Spent my freshman year at college just living in a dorm, paid for by the U.S. government, spending all of my money on food and games and skipping class and just being really a terrible student, having no idea what the hell I was doing, but I was having a great time doing it. That was a summer cycle. Eventually, I did get into West Point. And I quit because I hated it. That was the fall. That was the last fall cycle that I went through. It was pretty recent. But it was also a really long time ago. And I went to a deep depressive phase. I got lots of anxiety because I let everyone down who believed in me, who thought that I was going to become an officer in the U.S. Army. I was banned from returning to the ROTC. And um, I was lost and confused and had no idea what I was doing. So that fall season lasted about two years. And that was just me going through college trying to figure out what I was doing. I was just taking classes, doing what my counselor told me. I changed my degree four times. I, I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, I was engaged to my girlfriend and she was really the anchor for me during this time. But I was spending my college fund, I was running out of money, and I, I really felt purposeless. I didn't know what I was going to do. I wanted to become a doctor, a physical therapist, all these different things. And I moved into the winter phase, and that was probably like right after I got married. I moved into um, this house, and I took my first job after graduating college. Still depressed, still anxious, hated every second of my job. Ended up quitting and starting a company. No idea what I was doing. And um, <laughs> the further I went along with that, the deeper into the winter I went. And um, I went into debt. I, you know, grew cabin fever, staying inside the house, working on my computer all the time, lost contact with a lot of my friends, and, um, you know, had a baby. And that was very stressful. 
as my business started to grow and I started to figure things out and get my confidence back, I ended up building this $13,000 home gym in my basement. On the other side of that screen right there is my home office with a PC that I built. I've got multiple monitors and everything set up just the way I like it. And I started figuring out how to run my business and how to get confidence and started my YouTube channel and had a second baby. And before you know it, it was springtime again. And I've been moving through spring for a very long time. And right now in my life, I think I am, uh, I'm moving into the summertime phase of my life because I'm working on the Coaching Conversion Blueprint course, which is this really big deal. I've been working on it for months. I have beta testers who are going through it right now. And, um, you know, things are better than they've ever been. And I have become fully aware of these cycles um, just by paying attention to my life and the way that I'm thinking and the way I'm reacting to these different things. And I would invite you to look at your life. Write down every single major and minor event that has happened in the last decade of your life and begin to look at the patterns. Look for the light in the dark and, and try to identify where this cycle is beginning and ending. Identify the transition phases. Identify periods of growth and periods of depression. And you'll begin to see the patterns that your life is taking on. And I promise you they're there if you look for them. But doing this exercise and taking inventory of your life and trying to understand the cycles is really going to help you map out where you are and help you chart your growth and help you set expectations for what's coming next in your life. And I promise you, my friend, if you're, if you're in the depth of a winter cycle right now, a depressive cycle, I promise the springtime is just around the corner. And you need to appreciate the winter cycle for what it's worth because each of the seasons serves a purpose, right? The springtime is, is growth and abundance and just, you know, explosive. It, it's just a cycle of explosiveness, right? Outward expression, right? Everything is growing, reaching out, shedding old shells and becoming something new. And then the summertime phase is nothing but growth. It's nothing but growth. It's growth and exploration and positivity and energy. And then the fall is right the harvest where you take all of the fruits of the spring and the summertime and you begin packaging them and preparing for the winter and you begin to internalize and come inside, right? All of the things that you've learned in the last two cycles and seasons, you begin to internalize and try to interpret the meaning and figure out exactly what is next. And that's when you enter the winter phase. And all of the things that you did in the spring and the summer and the fall will serve as the food and the energy to get you through the winter phase and through the depressive phase. The depressive phase is not depressive. I don't say depressive as a way of saying sad or depressed. I say depressive as it's low, it's restful. There's, there's energy, but it's quiet and it's subtle and it's evenly spread out, right? And so during the winter phase, during the depressive phase, you should be introspecting. You should really be analyzing what you did that brought you into the winter phase. What, what happened in the last three cycles that got you to where you are now? And what does it mean? What does it mean to you? What are the lessons to be learned? And what should you be doing? What should you be planning to begin building and to begin growing and creating when the spring arrives? Because it will arrive. When the springtime arrives, you begin coming out of the cave, right? You begin thinking about where to plant next year's harvest, right? What you're gonna grow, what you're gonna do, what, what kind of projects you're going to build. So to not draw out an analogy for too long, that is the seasons of life, right? The cycles of life. And I, I think that there is some real power in that little thought experiment. And I hope it helps you, friend. Because if you're in that depressive winter phase, it's gonna end. It will end eventually, right? People make the mistake of thinking that they're going to stay in one season forever. They think that the sun sets and it's never going to come back up or the snow falls and it's never going to melt. And you know, the truth is you have to be ready for the change. You have to accept the fact that it's going to happen. And no matter what you do to try to stay in the summer as long as you can, and no matter how hard you try to get out of the winter, sometimes you just have to, to accept the fact that it is happening the way it's happening and you're just going to have to get through it. There are good things to be found in each of the cycles, in each of the seasons. There's always good to be found in the bad and bad to be found in the good. So my friend, I would just invite you to take this chance, this opportunity that you have to, to go inward, 
during this phase of your life and try to figure out what there is to learn, what lessons there are, right, to learn from, and prepare for the spring and the summer because they are just around the corner. And um, if you understand the seasons and appreciate them for what they are, you will be able to make better use out of the highs and lows of your life. You will gain an appreciation for the things that other people tend to resent or fear or run away from. If you can just learn to embrace the darkness, because it's there and it always will be. I hope that was helpful. Um, that was much more of a metaphorical um, response than I usually give, but I'm, I'm hoping that that is helpful to you and that you sit down and actually write out what's happened in the last 10 or 20 years of your life and try to identify where the big turning points are. This will give you insight into the catalysts that cause different responses, different feedback loops, different behaviors. And if you want to chart out where the spring, summer, fall, and winters are, you know, you can actually kind of predict how life is going to go for you for the next decade because these patterns tend to persist. People, people are actually just like everything else on this planet. We're just an organism. We're made of the same molecules as everything else. And when, when you break things down, you know, in a cyclical manner, we're, we're actually pretty easy to understand and, and quite predictable. But anyways, let me know if that was useful. If you have any other questions or things you want to ask me about life, self-development, mindset, fitness, or business, you can leave them down in the comments or shoot it to the email in the description. I answer your questions in videos just like this. You can also check out andrewwolner.com to learn more about me, what I do, what products and services I offer. And as always, we'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.